Are you stacking sats? Have you bought the dip? If there was a dip at all. Welcome to the Total Bitcoin Podcast Show. My name is Kay Van Davani. I'm also the host of the Total Connector Show. And it's all about connections, making the connections, understanding the connections. And so let's just dive into the recent updates been going on within and around surrounding Bitcoin. And I'll see you soon in a few seconds. All right, welcome to the show. Let's dive into the content and the topics which I wanted to cover and we'll go straight to the one of the first articles I saw by Kyle Torpy, which I had on my show a long time ago. US lawmakers are realizing they cannot ban Bitcoin. Eureka, hallelujah, I think they've finally figured it out. So you remember uh, it was sometime in May uh, when uh, Congressman Brad Sherman uh, half bald headed claimed that Congress should implement a ban on Bitcoin. But of course, Sherman did not know or how or, you know, the, the procedure or, you know, or share any specific details as to how such a ban could be effectively achieved. And there, uh, uh, Kyle Turpie, um, he posted, he tweeted on May 9th, 2019, I look for colleague use. Actually, he was quoting him. I look for colleagues used to join me with introducing a bill to outlaw cryptocurrency purchases by Americans, in part because an awful lot of our international power comes from the fact the dollar is the standard unit of international finance and transactions. And there you can see also, you know, for yourself, the video. And it's actually one of the, I agree with him, one of the best advertisements for the digital asset, for the, uh, for the crypto asset for the one and only you know uh, asset there is uh whether you call it digital gold or but actually it is the one and only unique uh asset with an absolute scarcity and that is bitcoin anyway so the and then it says here in the article the difficulties associated with implementing a ban on bitcoin are behind one's economist theory that the best way to kill the cryptocurrency would be for governments to become more competitive in terms of monetary policy and financial freedom and now what that would mean is of course you know governments would 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 radically radically have to transform themselves and uh, you know even if they try to go on the gold standard i think that would they would fail because of the competitive nature of you know nation states States and because of the failure of gold, uh, because of its you know weak monetary uh, properties it has, I mean the total monetary properties you know compared to Bitcoin, would it be you know the the centralized nature, the the the, the you know the the easiness of how you can confiscate it, it the difficulty how you can assay its valid the authenticity the the uh, you know the purity of gold. The trans, the the portability uh, compared to Bitcoin. How are you gonna, you know, how are you gonna even pay with, you know, a loaf of bread? Are you gonna like scratch off some gold? How are you going to validate and assay, you know, the validity, the authenticity of gold? So anyway, so so the governments, you know, would have to really compete for a much much better monetary policy and financial freedom and. Uh, and for a you know for for a non-inflatable money, and that is like you know you can just you know just forget about it. It's not going to happen, and it's too late anyway. So um, also, uh, Abra CEO Bill Barrett has also pointed out that bringing forth a Bitcoin ban could be legally difficulty for the U.S. government. That said, there is growing support for bans on encryption-based technologies among various law enforcement agencies in the United States, in addition to the Trump White House. And then it, it says um, at the end of the article, it says, on the other hand, more centralized cryptocurrency systems like Facebook's Libra project, which is really a cryptocurrency in name only, would, would be easier for governments to control. Now, and he also comments, it should be noted, extreme limitations on technology and financial freedom, such as the new cash related bill making its way through the parliament of Australia may end up unintentionally educating more people as to why Bitcoin has value in the first place. So, you know, the attempts to ban Bitcoin has been, you know, done a, a lot of times within China, India, whatever, you cannot ban Bitcoin. And, uh, you know, after all, it's, as it says in this article, is Bitcoin was built by cypherpunks as a form of digital money. 
that would be unaffected by the desires of politicians and regulators around the world. Lately, it appears that lawmakers in the United States are starting to realize the difficulties associated with potential Bitcoin ban. Okay, um, next up is India. I think that is uh, ties in pretty good uh, because the Indian government is considering a Bitcoin transaction tax with, that would add a billion dollar revenue a year. A move some industrial participants said is a sign of the government's growing comfort with cryptocurrency. And of course, you know, it's all about incentives, self-interest of the government, but that would to make, you know, to make sort of a uh, summarize these articles, it was, uh, it would, uh, first of all, they are planning to, you know, to impose, uh, in uh, impose an 18% goods and services tax on Bitcoin transactions, according to the Times of India. The proposal also suggests treating Bitcoin as current assets and charging the goods and services tax on margins made in trading. And an 80%, 18% GST on the estimated annual value of all Bitcoin transactions of, you know, of the uh, Indian rupee 40,000 crore, that's roughly $5.5 billion, would yield uh, somewhere around a uh, billion dollars in tax revenue. Now, the, uh, the, the, the unintended effect would, of course, be uh, because of the intended or planned uh, you know, tax is that more and more people would start hodling. And that would, of course, you know, that would somehow um, trigger a totally new chain reaction of it's, it's an advertisement for itself, you know, for Bitcoin. It's a, you know, sort of, a, you know, a, 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 a free uh, a, a promotional, uh, you know, advertisement and a public relations at a strategy for Bitcoin itself, which costs nothing. And people will start, start hodling and, you know, auto DCAing, accumulating Bitcoin, stacking sets. And that would, again, you know, increase demand, increase, you know, the price. And that would be a self-enforcing uh, uh, loop, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, um, uh, feed loop, uh, and uh, self-feeding loop and a self-fulfilling prophecy. So it's good for Bitcoin and it's good for India and it's good for the Indian people. And yeah, I'm all for it, let's go. And what else? Uh, there's another article on, fortunately I can't see it right now, but let's just jump to the next one. It's called the year of speed chess and the birth of Bitcoin as an asset class. Now. Uh, to make it sure, the CIO Jordi Visser explores the use of Bitcoin to hedge currency debasement and fiat asset inflation. He also highlights a view that blockchain allocations will become central to intelligent portfolio construction, citing the recent increase in utilization of Bitcoin within nimble corporate portfolios. Hefty government intervention and increasing market volatility has increased the need to leave behind a cumbersome, methodical game of traditional chess for fast-paced forward looking game of speed chess. Sort of a metaphor that, you know, we're, we're entering into a new era and uh, yeah, things are changing really radically fast. Oh, there it, there it is, the article I was looking for on Business Today. Center may impose, again, 18% GST on Bitcoin trading. So this is the same thing. Uh, it's, uh, you know, a couple of other maybe comments that might be, you know, uh, worth elucidating. Uh, it says here, currently Bitcoin is the medium of payment, has neither been authorized nor been regulated by any central authority in India. Further, no set rules, regulations, or guidelines have been laid down for resolving disputes that could arise while dealing with Bitcoin. Hence, Bitcoin transactions come with their own set of risks. So they, you know, the Supreme Court of India, they already asked the government uh, last year to come up with cryptocurrency regulation policies. So they smashed down the, the attempt by the government to ban it. The Apex Court in March this year struck down the curb on cryptocurrency trade in India. The Supreme Court squashed an earlier ban imposed by the Reserve Bank of India on trading in virtual currencies such as Bitcoin. So as you can see, uh, first of all, you know, Bitcoin is unstoppable, unconfiscatable. It is censorship resistant. It's borderless. It is, in, you know, it is global. It is, it is the, you know, the, the cat is out of the bag, Pandora's bar box been open a long time ago, 12 years ago, to be precise. Today is December 29, 2020. By the way, Merry Christmas, exposed. Yeah. Uh, what else do we have? There's a yeah, nice article on uh, Mises, but I'm going to 
Oh, there is an uh, was an uh, an interview with Nick Carter on the Steam Levier show. I'm just gonna just read one of the last paragraphs in the uh, in the transcript, and he says. Um, uh, Nick Carter says at the end, yeah, that's very well put. I think that's very plausible. I do think that the more truly cyberpunk stable coins that are issued in smart contracts form against liability free collateral. Those are the best ones. Those are the most ro robust ones. And they are the ones that are most likely to last the longest. The fiat backed ones are fragile so they can pop out of existence at any minute regardless of the regulatory wins at play we're going to figure out how to create stable coins on top of bitcoin and i think they're going to be a hit honestly i think they're going to be a hit so i'm pretty excited to see how developers figure out how to do that yeah so um so I think stable coins are by itself, uh, within its nature, sort of a you know enter and exit uh, tool, you know, to it's sort of a bridge, and uh, especially to Bitcoin. So I think it uh, stable coins by itself inherently are uh, a promoter, uh, uh, exponential you know pusher of Bitcoin's um, uh, mass adoption and of Bitcoin's price increase and uh, and you know, uh, and and uh, it's good for the you know for the total uh, Bitcoin uh, space in the long run. So what else do we have? Uh, time to go up. Bitcoin price due for push to hundred thousand dollars. Says Plan B. You know the guy who uh, created the stock to flow model, calling. Uh, he's calling Bitcoin's phase around ten thousand. It's not been wrong so far. Blah blah. You see the jump in model value at the halving white line and corresponding drop in stock to flow multiple model error white dots. Time to go up. So he has, you know, because the original stock to flow uh, chart differs from the more recent stock stock to flow cross asset that S2FX model, which incorporates macro factors and introduces phases in Bitcoin's metaphor metamorphosis is an asset. It calls for an average Bitcoin price of two hundred. Eighty-eight thousand dollars before twenty twenty-four, and that could be even an understatement. That's my comment. I always said that the stock flow uh, ratio model of Plan B is just an uh, ex post confirmation um, model. But once you know the the demand kicks in, once we have a critical mass adoption, institutions coming in, hedge funds, pension funds, individual retailers, you know the mass adoption, the not only millions but now the billions, and now, and and then after that the trillions, we're going to see you know a price of Bitcoin that's going to be off the chart, beyond the moon, and it's going to go right you know uh, beyond the uh, stratosphere of Saturn. And it says in the article, since the May halving, Bitcoin has put in red dots on the model, which have to run, uh, which have run to expectations, if not in a similar fashion to what happened after the two, 2016 halving. And if you'd like to compare periods and market cycles, the current state of the market is comparable to 2016. Flop upwards grind with long sideways consolidation periods in 2016, several were seen in 2020, 21. It's likely we'll see that. So yeah, we'll, we are up uh, for a lot of uh, surprises. Now, what I also wanted to uh, tell you a little bit about the comments of Luke Groman, which I, you know, generally uh, respect and have really high admiration for his macro knowledge. But there's just a, you know, uh, a, f uh, a bunch of um, what do you say fallacies and, you know, to be honest with you, really dumb comments he made, economically speaking, even, you know. He says that, um, he says, have you thought about what happens if you use something with a fixed supply like Bitcoin as a currency with an expanding population? It ain't pretty. And then I wrote him back. I wrote, uh, I wrote him, I wrote a comment. I said, there seems to be a fundamental blind spot in your comprehension process. Absolute scarcity of Bitcoin with its divisibility or in any other necessary monetary property within the deflationary economies of scale and exponential zero to one technological innovation creates abundance and more freedom, you know, and, and, and I, you know, attacked Jeff Wood in it. I was hoping he would comment on that, but you know, there was a lot of other people who, who tried to correct him. 
And Robert Breedlove also said, abundance from tech innovation has been harvested by governments through fiat currency inflation, rising productivity, yet rising prices and flat wages. Secondly, non-local government safety nets only necessary for society plundered by inflation. Third, money is the only vote that matters. And then, you know, it goes back and forth and, and, uh, and, and uh, Robert Breedlove says uh, also true, that war accelerates innovation, but this cannot be used as moral or pragmatic justification for theft via inflation, fiat inflation, exacerbates the scale and duration of warfare and simultaneously impoverishes entire populations. And yeah, so you can read it for yourself. Uh, it's on Twitter, Luke Groman, and yeah, and a bunch of other people commented uh, to his, you know, uh, fallacies in thinking and um, what is also interesting is that uh, there seems to be a bunch of people that still haven't figured out that if you have an, you know, uh, a money with absolute scarcity, it doesn't matter. It's like a slice, it's like a pizza. I mean, when you, when you, you can slice a pizza into whatever, you know, four quarters or eight or, uh, you know, into eight eighths or, uh, or 16 pieces or, or million pieces or trillion pieces, it stays the same. It does not increase, uh, you know, the, the, the scarcity of the pizza. It, this pizza, it just, you know, it just, uh, it just maybe divided and and subdivided into smaller and smaller pieces, but it just it does not make it abundant, right? So this is obviously Francis Coppola, and maybe I'll find it right here because Ben Kaufman also somehow made some memes out of it because it's really funny. I mean, uh, um, and uh, but before we go that, I'll 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 jump back and forth to J.P. Morgan's. He said some, some time ago, JP Morgan CEO, I'd fire a trader in a second for trading Bitcoin. And now look at, look at the recent news, Bitcoin price to grow 10 times by end of 2022, a JP Morgan estimates value of $650,000. So you see the wind is changing. It's all about incentives and um, greed and, uh, and of course comprehension. They finally figured out, you know, what's the best money, what's the hardest and scarcest money with absolute scarcity with uh, with uh, with a magic sauce of difficulty adjustment and oh this is the tweet I was looking for by Ben Kaufman the memes so he said <laughs> so he, he he somehow displayed this this pizza this is a whole pizza and if you half it it just you know it just halves it you can all you know you can also divide it into four eighths right but it doesn't make it bigger or more, or it doesn't increase its volume, or it doesn't increase the pizza itself, right? So this is obviously a lot of people have comp comprehension problems with. So this is one of them, Francis Cassandra Coppola. Coppola, I think she used to be film director. They believe Bitcoin is the scarcest asset in the whole world, even though its supply is constantly increasing and it can be subdivided so much that there's no practice in practice, no scarcity at all. I mean, what a stupid comment. I mean. I mean, I don't know, do people think before they write? And then this lady, I don't even know who she is, Amy Castor, if you can break Bitcoin down into 100 million satoshis, how is this digital scarcity? You just break it down into more units, right? So this is what people don't get. And even Peter uh, Joseph of Zeitgeist, the movie Zeitgeist, I'm really disappointed because I used to be, a, I used to be a long time ago, a, a fan because of the, as, at least it is attempt to, you know, to, 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 to explain, to describe the symptoms of at least the symptoms, or the, 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 the or even even the root causes of our of our uh, today's problems and ills and suffering and pain and inequality and stuff like that. So twenty one million is not a meaning 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 cap since the coin can be divided into units as small as whatever zero point zero 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 is one you know eight decimals BTC. So he hasn't figured it out yet. Um, so people obviously haven't really, uh, you know, understood the comp or learned the basics of mathematics and it's ridiculous. It's really ridiculous. So yeah, this is all I wanted to share with you for now, but if you have any questions, please, uh, uh, if you like this episode, please share it and, uh, uh, stack sats, uh, get yourself a single wallet, multi-sig wallet. If you have bigger funds. But please, uh, you need to inform yourself. You need to educate yourself on the multi-sig wallet. But get yourself a hardware wallet, stack sats on some kind of auto DCA platform or on 
you know, go on if. Uh, I understand if you are, you know, if most people have a hard time like going on a decentralized platform such as BISC or HODL HODL, but if you do buy on a, a centralized exchange such as Kraken, which is, you know, service is good and they have a good reputation, they have the lowest uh, fees. I'm not sponsored by them by, by any shape or form, but if you do just, you know, whatever it is with this KYC Bitcoin or non-KYC Bitcoin, transfer them to, to your Samurai wallet, mix your coins, what, wherever they come from, and then po and then if you want to spend them, spend them from the post mix, uh, which I have, uh, which we're going to do some more videos on those topics with it be security, privacy, uh, basics on wallets. So it's going to, it's going to come up. I'm going to do those together with uh, Zia from Iran and with Economy Alchemist or Burn the Bridge on Twitter. And uh, let me see what else I've missed out uh, with that. Yeah, so I told you about the stable coins. Um, uh, with Nick Carter and yeah, so also there's a good interview, I think on orange pill by St Stacey Herbert and Max Kaiser with, uh, Safida Namuz, who's going to come up with a new book, uh, the Fiat standard and with his original book, of course, uh, always a must read classical, uh, the Bitcoin standard. You got to read that also, also translate into 20 more, more languages. And um, the fiat principles, uh, or the econ economic principles, and the fiat standard is going to be his new publications. Let me see what else I have uh, not mentioned. Maybe, uh, yeah, Robert Brilov says Bitcoin doesn't change human nature, it's just a game with rules that cannot be broken to benefit those who can at the dispossession of those who cannot. When money is easy to steal, society becomes kleptocratic. When money is hard to steal, society becomes hardworking. And I would add more innovative, more productive, and more evolutionary. And, uh, you know, inflation is theft. That's it's systematic theft. The central banks are. Uh, self-appointed, self-elected, centralized entity above the law who can do anything. They're criminally immune and the governments are complicit in that. So, you know, it's one and the other in bed with one another, the governments, nation states with the central banks, we're going to get, get rid of them. And that starts with the root, with the seed of the essence of freedom. And that is Bitcoin, the hardest and scarcest money, decentralized, unconfiscatable, unstoppable, um, uh, you know, divisible, it's uh, easy and anytime verifiable and you can validate it for yourself with your own node. So it's, you know, it's, it's really what we've been waiting for and that will defund hopefully also uh, in the long run, the military industrial uh, corporate intelligence complex, it will diminish or even may, may make even wars, you know, the bloody wars have been going on those last decades or last or this, you know, last century obsolete and we will you know prosper into a really blossoming era of human civilization with total abundance and uh, societal uh, technological scientific structural and and any on any any evolutionary you know level you can think of okay so that's about it thank you so much for watching let me know if you have any questions you can dm me on twitter please follow me on twitter linkedin facebook my my Twitter handle is Kevandavani. My email address is uh, is uh, hello at the totalconnector.com or kd at kevandavani.com. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, to my podcast platforms on anchor.fm slash kevandavani. Read my articles on medium.com slash at kevandavani. Uh, you can also follow me on LinkedIn, Facebook, Telegram. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or wishes or desires, uh, any special guests I should bring on, please let me know or, you know, tweet it on Twitter. Thank you so much again for your support and for listening and Merry Christmas again and wish you all the best. If we don't see each other before that, uh, you know, a really good dive into the new year, 2021. It's going to be an exciting year and please don't forget stack sets, take care of your privacy and your wallet and your seed and, um, just tax hats and hodl and don't trade, don't sell, just hodl. Thank you so much again. My name is Kevin Davani, the Total Connector, and I'll see you soon next year on the Kevin Davani Connection Show.